everybody and welcome to day 245 of Reese's Stories and today I have a little visitor with me, my favourite teddy called Doggy because he's a doggy and today I'm going to be reading you Moni Mac Moan, The Accidental Hero by Ray Flannery and today I'm going to be reading you two chapters or tonight I'm going to be reading you two chapters called Five Days to Go and Four Days to Go so I hope you enjoy. It's Sunday morning and that definitely means no getting up early, no shopping, no homework, nothing to do and I have all day to do what I want. I know we are going to visit Granny and Granddad later but that is one thing I do not mind doing. It also means treats. I think I will call around to Willie's house first. We might go to the football pitch to practice. Willie needs plenty of practice. Of course, a top class player like me just has naturally ability. No practice required. Willie must be so glad to have a friend like me. I would want a friend like me if I was Willie. He is so lucky now that I think about it. I called around and we did practice for a little while. Of course, I just pointed out to Willie. There he was going around just as he, as we were leaving, Coach Ferguson drove past in his car. Great to you both, both practicing. He shouted. He was still wearing his tracksuit. He gave us a big city smile and a big thumbs up. Guess he thinks he is cool. When I get home, Mom orders to me to wash my hands how many times have i told you that you have to get rid of those germs especially now with covid 19. poor germs what did they ever do to anyone later on we headed to granny and granddad's house for our usual visit granddad is always messing with me when we arrive he tells me that he heard that i was in training for the big final and that because of this the only treat i was getting was a banana it's well known that athletes eat bananas all the time for energy he said ah i tossed myself i was waiting for mark to make that stupid face he always makes but he didn't just as i was going to say something i noticed mark had two packets of sweets in his hand that granda gave him to him when i wasn't looking mark dangled his sweets over my head to annoy me jump Mark said, but just as I was about to call Mum, Mark gave me, gave them to me. Reckon he was afraid Mum would take his treat off him if he got into bother. Maybe he isn't as stupid as I thought he was. Chapter 2, I'm going to be reading you today. Four days to go. Back to school, the excitement is starting to build about the final next Friday. Some of the classes were extra busy at the weekend because there, there were banners and posters up all over the school. There was even a big blue and gold f flag flapping away. On the big flagpole near the school gate, Mr O'Rourke was still in top form today. He brought us all over to the window to point out his shiny new car. I did look, it did look cool, too cool for Mr. O'Rourke though. Mr. O'Rourke told us that he got a message from Mrs. Strong that there had been a few burglaries in Ban Ban over the weekend and that she wanted us to be very alert. All oh, this week, in case we saw anything suspicious. I think Mr. O'Rourke was only worrying about his car. Coach Ferguson came into the class after lunch with Mrs. Strong beside him. They told us that just for this week, any of us on the team would be getting out of class half an hour early all week to train for the match. 
Happy Days Pete was not impressed. Serves him right for not bothering to try out for the team. I bet if he realised that there was time off school involved, he would have given it a go. Dad told me to get my homework done as quickly as I could this week so that I could relax in the evening for once. I agreed with him. After dinner, Dad started telling me about the time when he played for the school team. According to Dad, he was one of the fastest and fishest players on the team. I just can't picture Dad playing football. He groans now when he bends over to tie his shoelaces and sometimes he lets a big groan out even if he is just getting up from the coach. Then, couch. Then he suggests, suggests, we go out to the lawn to have a kick about. I think he has lost the plot. We went out, but his coaching lesson was cut every shot. After about 10 minutes, he threw the ball into the air. I connected with it just before it hit the ground. It was a rocket. Unfortunately for Dad, the rocket went at full speed right into his tummy. He said, lay on the ground holding his tummy. He could just about speak to tell me that the lesson was over. Don't think he would suggest a lesson for a while. The end. I hope you enjoyed that lovely, them lovely two chapters. And yes, obviously, you know, don't forget to borrow, buy one of my bookmarks. And um, so nearly done the book and don't forget to like, subscribe and share and follow me on Instagram and and watch our tea homeschool hub and it's brilliant and so I guess I will see you all tomorrow for day 246 of his stories and I might have forgot to say welcome to day 245 of his stories probably because I'm tired. So um, enjoy the rest of your day and I guess I will see you all tomorrow for day 246 of his stories. So I have 110 subscribers, which is really good for me. So thank you, everybody. And don't forget to check out Adam Purkle, my friend who goes to school with me. Um, so bye, everybody.